Hey USB hackers, I'm your host Troy Brown. Welcome to Hacker Warehouse TV, a great show for InfoSec neighbors. In this episode, we're talking to Rogan, senior researcher at SensePost. We caught up with him after his USB abuse talk at DEF CON 24. We talked about their unique wireless back channel application and how it differs from similar USB devices. Keep watching. Hey guys, I'm Troy with HackerWarehouse.tv, and this morning we're at DEF CON 24 on Sunday, and we ran into Rogan from SensePost. Rogan, how are you doing this morning? Really well, thank you. How are you doing? Great. We saw your talk yesterday, which involves this little device. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you talked about? Sure. So what I've been building is a, an advance on the tools that we're familiar with, like the USB rubber ducky that does keystroke injection. What this one does is it does the keystroke injection and mouse movements as well, but it's got, over and above that, it's got a back channel completely independent of your victim's network that allows you to communicate over that flash drive looking thing and basically command and control that workstation and anything else you can reach from there without necessarily using the victim's network. That's really interesting. So if for pen testers, what you would really all you need to do is plug this into the USB port once you get physical access yep. and then it creates an out of band channel that you then have command control over. Is that correct? That's absolutely right. Um, it connects to an, a wireless network. It's a, uh, an ESP8266 microcontroller in there with the Wi-Fi interface. And it can connect to an access point that's controlled by the attacker, so pre-configured to connect to that. Um, and then the attacker can connect to that using a VNC client, typing out commands, or using a scripted command, scripted tool, to type out, to automat automatically type out the commands that you want to use to exploit that client. The way it works in general though is you'll type out a short stub that knows just enough to open up the, uh, the device and communicate using that back channel back to the command and control center. And then that stub which is typed into a, a PowerShell window it disappears and then you don't see it after that. Yeah, so talk about that, like the implementation of this. What happens when you would plug this device in? So when you plug it in, it shows up as a keyboard and a mouse, um, which is relatively innocuous. We can make it show up as other things as well. It can be a printer, it can be a, a flash drive. It's a standard Atmega 32U4 chip, so it's got the capability to be any kind of USB class mm -hmm. uh, device. Um, for this implementation, we chose a um, obviously the keyboard and mouse, but a generic HID interface as well, which gives us the ability for any user on a Windows machine to access that device. There's no permission problems that you have to worry about. And you can create this bi-directional channel over that interface. That's really interesting. And in the talk you showed this, but it's really covert. Like the methods you put in there, so what the user actually sees when you plug it in, describe what the user would see when you plug this thing in. Okay. So we tried to make it as sneaky as possible. Um, when the attack is launched, and that's done at a time of our own choosing, it's not on a time delay or anything like that. Um, if, for example, we've got a site on the target, we can watch until their machine is unlocked. So that does have to be unlocked, it's just a keyboard. Um, but once it's unlocked, a window will pop up, uh, it's a PowerShell window. For a few seconds, you'll see some text typed into it and then it goes um, black on black or whatever the default color is of the background of the PowerShell window uh, and it clears so you don't see any more text after that. It will type in a little bit more text so a few seconds later, about five or so seconds later, the whole window just shifts right off screen. Um, it still has to be existing, it's visible in the taskbar so that it can accept the keystrokes which are still being typed in even if you can't see them. Uh, and, but then once the last of the, um, the stage naught stub payload, um, stub loader has been typed in, then that whole window disappears from the taskbar and it, the victim will not see anything more on their machine unless you deliberately uh, cause some kind of uh, visible action. To pop up. Yeah, yeah. I think in the demo you did the calc Absolutely. The, yeah. the, um, the obligatory calc was popped up. Um, it's a, a staple of demonstrations. Yeah, I think what was really neat is that what's interesting about this is you don't have to have the window open for the entire attack. You're just popping up to be long enough. You're just popping up so that the window can be there long enough just for the USB to configure the Wi-Fi and get 
that go Correct. So, so the, the stub payload that gets typed in is just enough for it to open up the generic hit interface mm -hmm. and then read in more code from there. Yeah. So you can, um, you can send an arbitrarily complex uh, piece of PowerShell that will do the second stage of the, of the attack. We demonstrated a command shell um, last night with the help of some of the Rapid7, well, Nubix, John, uh, Rob Fuller, managed to get Meterpreter running reliably, a full Meterpreter session running reliably over this device. Really? Right here at the con? Right yeah, here at the con. That's excellent. And you've posted most of your work out there online so that everyone sure. can see it, right? So the, the source code for this will be released. It's not released yet. It's not published. Yeah. Um, the hardware itself is readily available in our prototyping form. We're using the April Brother Cactus Micro Revision 2 device. You can get them on Tindy for 12 bucks. Okay. Um, we're working with Hacker Warehouse to get our custom hardware made right. available at a you know, reasonable price. In to, this form to the, factor right Exactly. Here, right? Okay. In that form factor to, to anybody who wants it. Excellent. Excellent. We're really looking forward to your work. Thanks for coming all the way from Johannesburg yeah. to be here. Great talk. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Thank you. It's a great to be here and I really had a good time. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks again to Rogan from SensePost. You can find their links in the description below. If SensePost research inspires you, let us know how in the comments. As long as you're there, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and share this video with your buddies. Once again, this is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and until next time, remember, keep it between the laws.